Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at Copilot by Microsoft, which is an AI functionality. We're actually not just looking at Copilot, we're looking at Copilot Finance, which is AI, and in my opinion, will give us the best indication of what, it's, what Intuit Assist could do for us going forward. And we're really excited about Intuit Assist. For anyone who doesn't know, Intuit Assist is a whole version of AI built particularly for Intuit, which includes QuickBooks, and it's going to be built from the ground up to give us information. Now, what I'm excited to do is look at Copilot because what I think Copilot does for us is give us a little bit of glimpse of what opportunities we can be doing with it. Now, if you look at my previous videos, which has looked about Intuit Assist, we've seen some amazing functionality, like it's been able to give you some insights and help you write some management accounts and be able to give you some insights of what's going there, cash flow forecasting, that sort of stuff. That bit's exciting. But what about your day-to-day -day work? Is there an opportunity for us to be able to, as an accountant, can we offer a much more efficient service? Can we eliminate the over-reliance on manual entry and give us an opportunity to be able to go and actually deliver a more thoughtful service? That's exactly what I want to look at now. And that's why I'm really excited about what Copilot can bring to the table. So let's have a look at Copilot first of all, and let's see that we can then reenact it within QuickBooks and see if we can get it to do exactly what we need it to do. Roll the intro. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, head of accounts here at Boffix, and also your friendly podcaster who goes live each and every Monday morning for Ask the Accountant at 8.30 a.m. Now, this video, there's a little bit of me saying I was wrong, if I'm completely honest, because I did a video over on the Boffix channel talking about how I thought Copilot was rubbish, uh, especially for accountants, and didn't do what I needed it to do. Then I realised I was being an umpty, and I wasn't actually installing the most up-to-date version of Copilot. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, Copilot is Microsoft's version of their AI. Copilot itself, I've done loads of videos on it and loads of interactions with it, but the idea in a nutshell is it's chat GPT-4 in this case, but it's a paid for version of it, meaning that you get all of that goodness of what chat GPT-4 can do, but it's in the Microsoft ecosystem. And I think that's really important because the Microsoft ecosystem has access to Excel and to PowerPoint and to Teams and everything else that goes with it. Now we're still in its infancy, so still a lot more to do, Copilot itself is rubbish when it comes to numbers, but what I didn't realize was there was a whole other section called Copilot for Finance. It's in preview, so beta, but to do that, you need to go in and add the functionality. You need to go basically to the app store within Excel, add Copilot for Finance there. It's the same as how Spreadsheet Sync works as well. We've talked about that a lot on the, and we've done a whole video dedicated to Spreadsheet Sync. So how does it work? Well, look at this set of data that's a big example of it. I've got sales invoices, one to 30. I've got customers here and I've got amounts here. I've also got a list of all the payments that I've received. Here's a payment date, here's the amount received, here's the invoice ID and a payment ID. Now imagine, I wanted to take this data and I wanted to compare it to that data. There's certain functions I could do. I could do like a vertical lookup and I could look up from here and I could see if it's done from there. All well, that's gonna take time. Look how quick it is if I use Copilot. So for Copilot to work, I'm gonna press the Copilot button up here. From the Copilot functionality, when it comes up, it's basically gonna say, what do I wanna do with it? I wanna reconcile some data. So when I reconcile some data, I'm first gonna choose where that first data is. Um, and then in the second one, I'm gonna say where the payment's received from. Now, I can press next and it's gonna generate some reconciliation reports. Now, most of the time I could just press confirm and I could get this information in from there. But just to be safe, let's dismiss this and let's build it ourselves. So if I go to add a column, a mapping key, I'm gonna say that my invoice ID, which is the one over here, I want that to match and I'll come down to the bottom here to my invoice ID. Let's add another column. I also want a, my, my, material uh, money column from there i want the amount to go and be against the amount received now in theory if these two are correct that's all i wanted to do i keep adding more though so maybe i want to be looking at the date key and maybe i really want the date to be within a range and i can kind of go through from there so i can have the date key and see what happens 
put it through from there. Now, from now, if I press next, now, with a few clicks of the button, it's generated me a reconciliation report. What that reconciliation report is all about is generating me on the left-hand side some really important information. Now, currently, it's hidden some of the information. It's hidden the match transactions. So, by if by magic almost, it's told me that this invoice number here and this invoice ID here match. So there's a zero difference on each one of those. It's gone through, it's found all them for me. I can literally hide those ones because I don't care about them. They're matched. They're the ones I'm important, I'm happy about. And then it's had a bit of a question mark over these ones, probably because of the date range. Maybe it's thinking it's probably too old for them to be right. But it wants you to make sure that these are happy. There's a zero difference for them. The IDs look the same, but for whatever reason, it's decide these as potentially match as opposed to match. Remember, this is the AI doing this. This isn't us. This is the AI going through and doing this. So look how clever it is to be able to get that information in there like that. And then finally, it's gone unmatched. Invoice 10, invoice 10. There was a 97p difference. It's letting you know about that. It's letting you understand that there's an issue there. Invoice ID 17 to 17. There's a £17.36. As you can see, you go through here. Invoice 31, payment received. We don't have an invoice 31 on the left-hand side. What, how, what's happened, etc., etc. What drama's happened here? Basically, it's given me that information. These are my unmatched ones. It's also given me a reconciliation report. A total of 21 sets of transactions were perfectly matched during the reconciliation, implying both corresponding IDs and the amount of data in the sales invoice payments were identical. This shows a high degree of harmony between sales and receipts data sets, firming the effectiveness of the reconciliation process. Uh, there are two sets of transactions categorized as potentially matched. So it's telling you why they're potentially matched. And then it's going through a key concern spotted with data involved six sets of transactions with discrepancy in them. Uh, there's a, there was one exact, there was exactly one transaction present only in the sales invoice data set and not reflecting the payment. And then similarly, a single transaction in the, uh, the other way around. So it's giving you some information. You can grab that information, you can copy it, put it into there. I can even do include the summary in the report. So it then automatically includes that information there and then troubleshoot a transaction. So if I click on a cell, it's going to troubleshoot the transaction for me. Unmatched. Why is it unmatched? The invoice ID 29 from the sales table dated this with the amount of has not been matched with a record in the next steps. Verify whether the payment for the invoice ID 29 is expected but not yet received, hence the absent in the receipts. Check if the payment was processed but not yet updated in the receipts table and go from there. It's giving me reasons of, or opportunities to fix this problem. What's going on? Let's have a look at this one here. Um, let's have a look at uh, ID number 10. Invoice 10 occurred on the 10th of the 1st and is present for both the sales table and the receipts table, but there was a difference of 97p. Then it says, so next steps, it's given me an option to go confirm the rounding position when summing receipts, as it could lead to a minor discrepancy. So maybe it was the fact that we just could put the calculation in wrong, for example, or the payment amount exceeding the invoice total points to potential overpayment by the customer. Review the individual receipts, receipts entries for invoice 10, particularly receipts numbers 30 and 33. So basically it's giving me an opportunity to look into it and see if there's anything there that might be of use. But how powerful was that? Now the question is, can we extract the same data and information from QuickBooks itself? Especially with the power of Spreadsheet Sync. Is there a way where we can add in data from here and let QuickBooks do a bit of reconciliation? Well, let's have a quick look. Because if it's that powerful to be able to go in and do reconciliations, can we use it in day-to-day -day work? So let's run a report. So there's a really crude example. I've brought in my invoices on one page and I've brought in my um, payments and my deposits on the other page. So let's see if they're able to look at one another. So using my co-pilot, I can click co-pilot. I can reconcile some data. One of them's on my table there and then the other one's on my sheet one there. Let's press next. See if it can find the rules itself. Yeah, I'm not 100%. Let's adjust these. Let's not have, oh no, look, uh, let's not have the detailed, that's it. Let's just have customer amount. Press next. And now it's gonna see if it can try and generate a reconciled report based on these. 
So it's a really crude example, but basically it's matched automatically the Apple Core ones that have come through, but it's not been able to match the £750 and it's not been able to match the £1,000 we've received here. So again, it's given me a big breakdown there. So I can do an opportunity to save as PDF, include the summary in the report. So it's there, it's saying that the reconciliation operation result in one set of perfectly matched transactions, no potential matching for this one, discrepancy in this one, um, and go from there. And again, if I click into any of these ones, I can have individual troubleshoot a transaction, click into that one there. Why was this one unmatched? Because the customer name, team one, and the amount of £1,000 wasn't present in that table, going from there. Now, to make this easier, I should really rename the tables right. I should have made the tables invoices and receipts, you know, but I'm just showing a crude example of how this works. I use Spreadsheet Sync. I got the data from Spreadsheet Sync into Excel. From there, I was able to use the reconciliation to look and find the difference. If this was a much bigger data set, how much use would this be for you? Going in, find potential matches, find the unmatches, going down so you only need to contract these unmatched ones and these matched ones would be okay for you. This is just looking at invoices versus payment received. But what about bank reconciliations? What about cash book reconciliations? What about the idea of looking into your Amazon control account, your eBay control accounts, things like that? That's where the power of this becomes so much more powerful for you, right? And all I did here really was use spreadsheet sync, use Copilot, let them talk to one another, and I'm off to the races. What do you think? Do you think this is the way forward? Do you think that this is something that could be incorporated into day-to-day -day business? At the moment, I'll be honest with you and say it's a little bit clunky. There's a little bit bits of here that you've got to kind of train your team to be able to be able to make the most out of it. But once they have been trained and once that is there, there should be some really good savings available. So what do you think? Copilot for finance. Do you think this is an insight into what Intuit Assist is going to do for us? Or do you think it's something that we need to keep working with Copilot for finance to be able to be something that works alongside something like Intuit Assist to really take us as accountants to the next level? As we say many times on here, the idea of AI is to really speed that process up, find ways to do it. I was blown away that it's been able to do this bit for me already, right? With a few clicks, I'm able to go in and find some reconciliations and go through from there. I hadn't even looked at the data. I had no idea if the data was clean or not clean, but it was able to tell me that straight away that, well, one of those matches was completely spot on, two of them potentially have issues on them, and I really should look into those issues, right? And fix them accordingly. But what do you guys think? Do you think this is going to be something that's going to change the game, or do you think it's something that we don't really need to worry too much about. I'd love to know your thoughts below. Don't forget, if you want to see more about how this AI has been able to bring stuff in, I'm going to do more videos on Copilot for Finance as I get my head around it, figure out more to do with it. And when QuickBooks Assist is here, don't you believe it, I'll be using every aspect of QuickBooks Assist to be able to figure out exactly what it can do and can't do. So, my name's been Aaron Patrick. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want me to look at with Copilot for Finance. My name's been Aaron Patrick. This video has been an absolute pleasure. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this new series. Hello and welcome to this video. 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 Alright, let's get it set. Let's do this. Oh yeah, I'm alright. Yes, I'm aware we go live every Monday. The next generation is about everyone else that missed it. Yeah. So, come on. All right, you've told us what you love about the industry, but what would you change about the industry? Where do I start? During that period of time, where did everyone turn to? Their account, right? Their advisor, the bookkeeper, and you all did phenomenal work for small business.